Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cumanera, an Excorians Points podcast, or an all queer cast Numenera podcast. I'm Kenny, the cast member who plays the lovable and simple lad Hillian. If you love our show, we hope you'll rate us and review us on iTunes or wherever you consume your podcasts. Every review makes Kelric, the GM and producer's eyes, sparkle and helps new listeners to find us. We don't pay to advertise. Did you know that we had a Patreon? We are grateful to everyone who's already become a patron. You keep our mics on and our dice rolling. We've got some great rewards, so check them out at patreon.com slash experience points. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network. So hello. Good hello. morning. Hello. My name's Kelrick. My pronouns are he, him, and this is Experiences Points, Experience Points, Cumanera. Goodness, I am not awake. I was going to say. You're <laughs> all on top of the ball today. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, and this is my fabulous cast. Please introduce yourself, starting with, let's start with Kenny. Okay, yes. Hello, my name is Kenny. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. And I play Helian Jossa, a an earnest Jack who howls at the moon. Can we do it again without me hitting my mic stand? I mean, <laughs> I think we're fine. <laughs> cool. Cage? What's up, y'all? I'm Cage. I use she, hers pronouns, and I'll be playing Charlie, who's a strong-willed nano who talks to machines, and Charlie also uses she, her pronouns. Aaron? Hello, uh, my name is Aaron. I use they/them pronouns, and I play Rylu, a graceful glaive who speaks with a silver tongue. And they also use they/them pronouns. That's the first time I don't have my second screen to tell me what I am. So, That's crazy. so, Cage, give us a recap. A recap? Well, <laughs> you see, uh, Calric hates his players. No, <laughs> <laughs> loves his players. Hey, allow me to I just, I just. To the Cumanera Twitter account, which shows me I did not giving. ask for that. Charlie I say a lot of things. You can't that. blame me. <laughs> I say a lot of things. All right. So um, we were settling in for the night and... Um, and a uh, Jurassic happens to come bounding out of the woods towards where we had started to make camp. Thankfully, somehow, uh, Rylu uh, threw a razor ring at this Jurassic car that had poison on it, which forced it to go prone, uh, which gave us definitely the advantage that we needed. Not to say that it wasn't a struggle to take it down all the same. Um, and, uh, between our many various different attacks on the Straskar and Rylu's incredible balance and uh, drive to to take down this Straskar, we were able to do so, um, but also not without Halian uh, coming to be. <laughs> um, although taking down the Straskar definitely assisted in making sure Holly and had the food that that he needed and after um Holly and uh had his fill um yeah. we we fell asleep and we attempted to clean up the blood and the things as it was all over well quite frankly all of us but we we passed out Around around the fire after a very strenuous battle. Yeah, that's about right. Howlian did come in and kill steel from Rylu, but nice. The only attack the Draskar got off was against Howlian, and it missed. Didn't even get to hit y'all once. <laughs> It, it might have killed us. <laughs> yes. It it was absolutely insane. You all did really well. And a lot of luck came into it. Getting the right roll for the right poison and then actually hitting it. It's pretty cool. Um, so you all 
passed out. No watch felt was needed. Um, as you're resting and exhausted, I'd like to think your minds go to some place where you have felt physically or mentally taxed like this. And there was something or someone who comforted you. So can each of you, starting with Aaron, just tell me a little backstory about what that experience was? Yeah, so um, so mm, real quick, I have the story, but do you remember what city it is that me and um, Shinla had our backstory in? Why is it I got to remember this stuff? <laughs> I, you know? Do you have it in your notes section? No, no. Probably not. Have you met me? Um, we'll just, we'll skip it. Uh, so anyway, so Shinla and Railu were, um, were running a mission for the court of the rogue and they got stuck in a really, really particularly terrible situation where they ended up having to fight their way out of, um, the mayor of, uh, the city's, what would be bank, you know, listen, why they were there, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it was a really arduous, strenuous fight. And, um, you know, after climbing over rooftops and scaling, you know, uh, walls and dodging num numerous Numenera devices, um, they finally escaped out into the woods. And um, the way that Rylu tends to, to recover from a very bad situation like this, especially one that was so physically taxing, is by taking out these special tea packets that they have and, like, brewing them and just sipping on that. Um, okay. And so it takes them a while to physically recover. Like they probably won't be doing stretches for the next couple of days, but yeah, they, they actually brew tea when they're relaxing. Okay. That's lovely. How about you, Cage? I'm sure to nobody's surprise, uh, Charlie's way to ground herself is to mess around with mechanical items and new and era and things like that. And, um, she always has some sort of small little gadgets and things um, on her person. And um, even if they're not broken, she will uh, mess around with them to see if she can um, improve them or um, really it's um, in some instances, it's just a way to fidget and get that anxious energy out um, while doing something that makes sense to her. Okay. Was there ever a person who gifted her with something like, started that process or yeah so her earliest tinkering definitely goes back to her father um uh, he was the, the first one that really taught her some of the things that she knows about Numenera and um you know the mechanical and while she hasn't seen her father in a very long time um memories of being with him as he worked on his projects still come back to her in those moments Nice. And I'm really curious, Kenny, does Hillian have anything like that? Hillian has a sense of a memory where um, he was afraid and running for his life. When he stopped running and was able to take a breath, uh, he was able to sit down and eat um, this rough forage of, of uh, delicious mushrooms, actually. And um, he was comforted by a, um, a, a woodland creature who came up to him. And uh, I believe that was like the first Jacques. They, they struck kind of a, a mutual respect agreement where, you know, Jacques would go hunt down some roughage and um, Hillian would prepare it for them and they would like Hillian would provide like a safe shelter for Jacques to sleep in and Jacques would help Hillian forage for food and in this one instance um, it basically saved Hillian's life okay that's pretty cool I like it is this where Hillian's love of mushrooms come from? Yeah, I think so. Nice. 
Well, very nice. You all are passed out for a good 10 hours. <laughs> like, that was the most strenuous thing I think you all have maybe ever done. But you killed a Jurassar. Um, so you've done all your recovery rolls. If you need to do more, go ahead. Just do them and fix your numbers. It looks like Charlie has a lot of experience to spend. Are you going to spend it all? Um, I was thinking about taking um, one of the leveling things, which is, I believe, four yep. experience points. And that would still leave me with one left over um, in the case of a reroll or us wanting to avoid some sort of disastrous intrusion. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> None of that could possibly happen. Um, and since the last time I did this, I actually teared up. I have the opportunity to take um, the additional stats, the additional effort, the additional edge, or a new skill. I'm thinking I might want to take the additional level of effort. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. So you all are passed out. There's a dead Jurassar and two <laughs> moldy cinnamon scented other, uh, I can't remember what they're called, creatures around. And then you have your... The uh, Chirogs? Yeah, the Chirogs. <laughs> yeah, you all have a lot going on at this campsite. A lot. Um, nothing comes along. I think all of these different smells are warding away all the smaller things. And you're fortunate enough that no Jurassic have come along in your sleep. Although, honestly, they would probably just eat your anines. Or that Jurassic or whatever's left over. <laughs> whatever's convenient for Cal. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, you all wake up. I think you still feel pretty sore and bruised. Maybe even like when you wake up and you're still tired, but you can't really sleep anymore. It's a new midday. Y'all are hungry. Assuming you start breakfast and then deciding what to do now. So what are your plans? Well, Rylu does their morning stretches, but it's a lot less than normal if anyone notices. I doubt anyone does, but just for the <laughs> record. Um, and then, uh, you know, breakfast and all that. But I mean, Rylu doesn't know what what where we're going. So I'd just check on the Anines after that, make sure they're um, secured. And then, you know, wash off. I'd go take a bath in the local... Well, I'd make sure, I don't know, I'd ask Charlie if the river is safe to bathe in. But if I remember correctly, we're all covered in blood, so that's a priority. Um, I would say not jumping into the river, as there are creatures in there um, that would probably also like some breakfast. But you could probably take like a container of water and, you know, wash yourself with that. So if you look at the map that I created... To the southwest, there is a small lake that is separated from the main body of water that surrounds this area that Charlie would know you can safely or could safely access the last time she came through. So if you wanted to take a bath or whatever, you could do that. Okay. Um, but it would be that one specifically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie will be very careful to be like, okay, this exact area right here, you're okay to go in. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. 
right here. <laughs> we don't need any more trouble. <laughs> How far away is it? It doesn't look too far on the map, but I just want to make sure. It's right there. It's right there. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, cool. It's like your whoever built this really did build it for safe camping. So, you know, it certainly saved your bacon. So, you know, yeah, you're fine. Cool. Yeah. So Riley would go wash up too, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, they might go search through the tower later, uh, or they will go search through the tower a little bit later if we have time for that. But oh, you have time to do whatever you want. Hmm. That's Riley's plan. Okay. How about Charlie and the Hilly Alien? Um, Rylu, while well, Rylu is, uh, taking their time doing whatnot, uh, Charlie is probably looking a little bit more like, let's go. <laughs> there is a large Jurassic corpse now in our campgrounds. Um, we have the scent of Chirag everywhere. And Charlie's been through here enough to know that that is not the end of what could possibly come out of these woods. And so she's... As soon as she wakes up, she's probably like, oh my gosh, we slept for so long. And is like quick eating because she recognizes that nourishing your body is also important on travels like this. It's much harder to like stop in the middle of nowhere to do something like this. Whereas there's already the campsite here. We can cook something warm. Like, I mean, I don't know if just dress scar meat, something that people would consume. I'm not sure. <laughs> but like we have potential food sources around here because that's what this area is made for. Um, but she looks like she's packing up her stuff. Okay. Hillian. Hillian, I think, uh, attempts to climb out of the Jurassic corpse nest that, um, Howlian <laughs> created. Um, actually, if you'll recall, um, Rylu and Charlie spent a lot of time mm -hmm. chopping your way out oh. of that for you. Mm -hmm. That's why they're <laughs> covered in blood. As much right. as they are. Right. Okay. Well, then Hillian wakes up and um, is a little disoriented, but does not let that stop them, uh, him from, you know, figuring out his surroundings and finding the food and um, walks up to Charlie. Um, can, can I help you make breakfast? Uh, Charlie will, like, make room by the fire and start handing uh hillian some different pieces and stuff as and i recall hillian was kind of cleaned up but the two of you were too tired to really clean him up mm -hmm. and cage i'm pretty sure charlie was pretty blood covered herself so yeah i think we're all pretty equally gross looking at this point <laughs> so you're going to make food unbathed well so just chucking in at this point the blood has oxidized enough to be brown so it looks a little <laughs> bit like dirt really and hillian has never really concerned himself with not being dirty unless it's you oh know offensive to others so hillian's going to proceed like you know you know brush it off on some rocks you know <laughs> that kind of cleaning <laughs> Okay. And I, I imagine Charlie probably already did that before she gets it because okay. it's like Riley was going over by that, um, like the kind of pool area. And um, with Charlie being like all freaked out about how late we slept, that was probably one of the first things that she did because she, like I said, she recognizes that this is not a place that we want to be at for a long period of time. But also she recognizes that being covered in blood is also not what you were the kind of the situation you want to be in in this location okay so you all do that give me some quick perception checks oh. do not feel like you need to spend effort if you don't want to i was gonna say i don't think hillian spends any effort me neither um... Oof. Ooh. And it Ooh, that was close. I got a two. <laughs> <laughs> so a two, a four, and twelve. So Rylu, um, after you're done bathing and you're coming back to camp and you're looking at this 
disaster of a apex predator Jurassic that's lying dead um you see in the scattered results somewhere from you don't know if it was there before or if it was after but there is something glinting in one of the trees around the outpost that you all were upstairs in and it looks like a cipher of some sort in the trees up in one of the trees about a, a Jurassic's head high height <clears throat> oh how convenient um uh, hey um hey charlie mm -hmm. do do you see that and i'll try to point to where it is yeah um Tyler's so like... <laughs> not so great not with everyone the new... can see that <laughs> this will be a podcast too. That's true. Charlie's cr craning your neck around uh, to see around the the uh, structure. So I'm um, not so great with the Numenera, but th there's something up there. Do you want me to climb up there and get it to see what it is? It could be useful later on. Uh, sure. All right. So Riley will try to. I mean, if it's near the tower, I would try to access it from the tower. But if not, I'll climb the tree. Yeah, you climb the tree. Cool. And with all of your skills, I don't think you even need to make a roll. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> this is just so you climb up there. Um, it's a shatter wand. You can look up in the party sheet what it is. And I would suggest you all figure out how to divvy up and choose the ciphers you're going to keep yeah this is an artifact and it's ridiculous it is you all killed a jurassic <laughs> yeah you you deserve something big for and that and exploded in loot jiminy cricket <laughs> yeah right mm -hmm. um so yeah riley would get that down um and bring it to uh Bring it to Charlie, because like, I'm terrible with Numenera, so I mean, I, I guess I can roll to see if I know what it is, but... Um, <laughs> you have a negative to that. Yeah, I'm not applying any effort. Yeah, it's a... I think that'll fall under a TD2. Yeah, that's not going to make it. Yeah, so I'd bring it down to Charlie and be like, well... Charlie this... And and both are good with yeah, Numenera, both have so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I just figured because I. But what is what else is um, Hillian doing? Because I know Charlie was cooking and then like taking a bath, which is why I assume that I was probably with Charlie. But what's Hillian doing besides cooking? Hillian is cooking. Um, if Jacques isn't around, Hillian would be looking for Jacques, um, and and then breaking camp. Mm -hmm. Jacques is there. Jacques is comfortable now that it is daylight, and Hillian is only moderately hungry how exciting yeah it's only day three <laughs> <laughs> more of these charlie joined the party at just the right time yes Boy, <laughs> and you need to do roll to see if you can figure out what the artifact is okay um so charlie can roll at understanding numenera roll sure and just looking at this artifact um does it look like there's any like electrical machine components that she could use her machine affinity with or? Um, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Especially with the way you've been describing how your, what is that ability you use? The overdrive or? The yeah, onslaught overdrive. one? Onslaught. Onslaught. Your onslaught. Okay. So, there you go. Oh, good roll. So, yes, you know that this is called a shatter wand. So, I would A, 
like you to describe it and B, roll for the artifact level. Okay, so is that the the, the depletion thing or do I roll a D6 for that? 1D6 plus 4. Nice. Nice. A level 9 artifact. That seems fair for killing a (laughs) Jaraskar. So what does it look like? And who's going to keep it? Oh, boy. Well, I think, like, Rylu probably comes down to Charlie, like, I don't know what this is. Do you know what this is? And Charlie's going to look at it and be like, you don't know what this is? (laughs) This is incredible. Um, And, like, you can just see by the way that she's holding it and she's, like, inspecting it and stuff like that, that, like, this is not, like, a small deal, right? Like, the fact that you just found this is like a like she her mind is blown like her little like like you can almost see the cogs in her brain turning <laughs> like you just see dollar signs in Rylo's eyes <laughs> and i'd like to think that you were reading about this specific advice in the book that Gaston gave you yeah um and and so like yeah i mean if it's in that book she's probably like flipping to the page and like showing rylu like you don't understand like it's right here it's in this book um and uh i guess i could kind of read maybe some of this off for for folks just so other people have an idea of what the shatter wand does um it realigns the molecular structure of a living target um basically crystallizing the flesh um it's a long range uh, like weapon essentially. Um, and it doesn't have any visible cues that it's necessarily being used. So like, there's no, like it says in the description here, there's no ray or projectile. So, um, there's not really like an indication that this is being used. Um, and it inflicts damage equal to its level. Um, so that's a pretty big deal considering Mm -hmm. how I just rolled really high on that. Um, and if the target were to die by this device, um, it, just shatters and um, exploding in an immediate radius with crystalline shrapnel that also inflicts three points of damage. So it kind of has like that um, aura damage as well, or like an area effect damage in a way. Um, And it's a rapid fire weapon. So it can be used um, with other abilities. Uh, And it says in here that each round of ammo used or each additional target selected requires an additional roll, but yeah. Um, that's still pretty incredible. <laughs> pretty good. So is Charlie keeping it? Or I think Charlie's going to have a really hard time letting it go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But if somebody gave her a good reason why they should have it, she could probably be persuaded, but she would definitely envy it the entire time that you have it. <laughs> I think... <sighs> I think Rylu, God, Rylu doesn't need it, but I think Rylu, the character, would try to keep it, honestly. Um, so I think Rylu uh, as hands it over, hands it over to you, and you're like, oh my God, this is incredible. This is so amazing. And Rylu's like, oh, oh, that's what it does. Well, I mean, d- do you want it? Because I, I, I mean, I, it seems like something that would be really, in case something else attacks us, would be really good to have on hand. And, I know that you know you have your long distance, and I just I was at, I was um, after my chakrams. I had to get really close. It'd be really great if I had something like that, you know, for safety because you have your your mental abilities and like trying to play that. <laughs> because to be fair, Riley was after the razor rings were thrown. I had to get in close. So Charlie and the meanwhile basically had to hide. <laughs> <laughs> because not built for for combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got onslaught, and once my intellect pool goes down, I mean, I also have a razor ring, but that's like the same situation. I think a little bit of so my th- my bond with Charlie is that I don't want to use my powers, so I think that's why Rylu struggled a bit. Because like part of that's true, because after Rylu had to like had to get in close, but like a little bit of it's not true because Rylu loves getting up close in combat, so like. That's why it was weird. They were like, mm, I don't really want to do this, but I really want this. So it's kind of playing on that bond. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we've actually discussed the bonds between Charlie and uh, Rylu and Hillian oh, yet on, on stream. Um, and so the reverse part with that with Charlie to Rylu is that um, Charlie feels like Rylu's really leery of her, but it could just be her perception. And I think that could play into the situation as mm -hmm. well, where like, she's like, they already like kind of are questioning me and like I haven't really shown a ton of trust. I give them this thing, then maybe <laughs> is it just me thinking that it's like this, or is it really like this? <laughs> This is and such a cool thing. It's like, I'm taking it. No, Hillian's <laughs> sitting across, actually. And as you you two are, like, discussing this object, uh, Hillian uh, kind of looks up and looks a little weary and, and says, it sounds dangerous. Well, it is. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's better to have that than just leave it around to be used on us, especially with the convergence around. Didn't we just get rid of an artifact that could make massive changes in someone's person? Is Aaron forgetting this? Did we? The the rod that can turn everyone into like one of the other creatures. Oh. Well, that's that was a mass uncontrollable effect that required a human sacrifice. That's nothing like this. Well, something definitely has to die. <laughs> Charlie's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, if a Jurassic comes upon us again, of course it's going to die. I'm not going to let a you know Jurassic take you on, Hillian. I, I'm not suggesting that we you know don't uh, you know fight things head on. I'm just saying that this is a little bit much. And Hillian kind of looks down at at his feet. Riley will just like wave in front of Charlie, like it's fine, it's fine, and then uh, and then like you know, Riley at least I don't know who's holding it right now, but Riley would be like, I I think I would like to hold on to it at least. Charlie's like, <sighs> <laughs> looks down at it <laughs> and like hands it over. <laughs> But then, like, looks back at her book and is, like, reading it more about, like, what it does. And remember, I don't even Rilu understand. Already has an artifact. I was actually just thinking that, though, but I just feel like the care, I don't oh, want. Oh, yeah. No, the character, mm. do what the character would do. Yeah, because I want you to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll find a way to get it back to Charlie. Okay. So, put that in your inventory and... Yeah, we'll let that play out. That's, That's a exciting. ridiculous item. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can take it back. That's no, fine. no, I'm fine with it. It's just, it's so cool. <laughs> you killed a Jurassic. <laughs> you were upset because you thought you would die. You're like, well, I guess Calvert wants to kill us. Now I do something <laughs> nice. And you're like, oh, it's too nice. <laughs> How do I help you all? <laughs> Meanwhile, Hillian's over there being like ominous and foreshadowing. Nothing's <laughs> gonna bad's gonna happen here. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cool. You found that. Um, Charlie, give me mm -hmm. a intelligence check, please. Mm -hmm. Straight int. Ooh. Ooh. I'll take that. You know. That if you were to bring a Jurassic head into Jerusi with you, it would catch some people's eye and probably make you all look like a set of major badasses. It also wouldn't fly under the radar. So up to you whether you want to do that. You could probably sell it for a significant number of shins not that you need a whole lot at this point you have a lot <laughs> of money. you have a lot of money i don't know what you're talking about we can always <laughs> use a little more cash not saying you can't <laughs> just throwing it out there okay. we just got a bag of shins. just so charlie's handed over the wand to rilu and 
I imagine at this point, uh, Charlie and Riley have kind of cleaned up. Um, the food has been kind of made, and uh, I think Hillian had started taking down some of the camp stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, although it was probably still covered in blood. I don't think anything uh, has happened has, with that. Has, has dirt bathed. Hillian has rubbed dirt over whatever he's determined is dirty. Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Charlie then will look to to Rylu, probably more specifically, but kind of to both of them. And so I have a high risk, high reward proposition. <laughs> Um, okay. Where we're going, there is the possibility that a head of a Jurassic could fetch quite a few shins. But of course, um, it's not very usual to see a party of folks coming into a, a town with a Jurassic head. Especially one so small. Like a small yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Usually, when I've seen that growing up, it was a huge party of adventurers. I mean, it was, you know, like a parade of, of folks. And it was a really big deal if a group came in with the head of a Jurassic. But, um, and it could, it could, uh, if we could find the correct buyer, um, get us some shins. However, that also means carrying Jurassic with us through these woods. Um, and there may be some folks within the town that aren't interested in having a party coming through with a Jurassic head. How much is a lot of shins? Helric? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how much would she think a, a Jurassic head would go for. It's such a unique item. Probably about double what you currently have. Oof. We're talking significant. Like so, what I currently have or what Charlie currently has? What's in the party inventory? Okay. I was like, I have 1,500. Um, yeah, I, Rylu, Rylu's hmm, thinking about that. How many shins do we have in the party inventory? Because mine doesn't say anything at all. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I have 1560 on me. How much do y'all have? I have 228. I have uh, 152. Uh, Hillian is not so interested in monetary things. So, so, so li- Rylu and Hillian, between you have 1712. Maybe have a little over 19 because, between all of us. Because um, remember, Rylu, you're holding half of that for Hillian. Hmm. Um, it's yours, but you specifically said you were carrying it for both you and Hillian. I mean, Rylu will buy Hillian whatever he needs. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's half of it. They did say <laughs> half. Yeah. I'm, did, but okay, but like, was Tiuna there? Because, <laughs> like, if Tiuna was there, then they would say that. <laughs> um, At any rate. Uh, no, yeah. So Charlie will just kind of look at Riley and be like, "Are you interested in doubling your money?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, you see Riley be like, almost unbelieving, but also like, this is not the area of expertise. Now, how much of a risk is it though? Like, does carrying around a Jurassic head attract more, or does it scare more? Um, well, while we're in the woods, it'll certainly attract attention from other creatures that we probably don't want having a large, you know, meat carcass on on our anine. Um, of course, we already have the Chirag, so it's possible that it won't attract any more than we already would be. But within the town as well, there are some that would praise us as, you know, prime adventurers, especially in such a small party. And I think there are others that would that would see it as almost like a challenge or or even they may try to get it for themselves. And it's, I mean, imagine just carrying, you know, thousands of shins on your person openly. You're, you're asking for folks to come and take it at that point. 
Uh, Hillian, you're the nature expert here. What do you think? I mean, I know that you don't put much stock in, in shins, but you can also get so many snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, many mushrooms. While, while you all have been like kind of having this debate, Hillian's been building up this pyre of just like sticks and woods. <laughs> Uh, uh, and they're they're going to start uh, burning the corpse of what's there. So, like, because he doesn't want to just leave the carcass there for the next adventuring party. He wants to dis- disperse it. Aren't Draskar like ten feet tall? Oh yeah, like how huge? It's what, gonna. What? It's a lot of. It's a lot. While of you're having this conversation. Um, Hillian has picked up a bunch of sticks. Not enough, but a <laughs> bunch. So it, it was—it's a part of his breaking camp. He's—he's he's collecting mm-hmm. all sorts of burnables to to have basically a funeral pyre. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would not know that probably as Rylu. So I would turn and still ask you that, like. Now, I know that like shins aren't really a thing that you care about, but we can get you so many snacks and maybe like. We can get Jacques like an outfit or like a harness <laughs> or a backpack. Like there are things that we could use this for, but how dangerous do you think it is? Um, I, I'm not interested in carrying the head around, but I won't stop you. I guess I'd turn back to Charlie and be like, well, Charlie, I mean, these are your woods and your town. I mean, it sounds obviously very lucrative, but uh, but the convergence following us and it's up to you. I, I I don't know. I'm down for the money, of course, but the danger I don't know enough. Um, I I mean, yeah, what you say is absolutely true about. I mean, thinking about the convergence and the order as well. I mean, this will definitely be evidence that we have come through here. I mean, a party of three coming into Jerissi with a Draskar head that word will probably travel around the forest. I mean, it's up to you. I you would also know that all of these dead things laying around are going to cause gossip between Ephraimon and Druisi. And with y'all disappearing, it's pretty possible that the Order and the Convergence would get news of this and figure it's a good bet to start searching there. So taking the head and selling it, not the worst idea. It would slow you down a little, but you're maybe two days away, if that, from Jerisi. Um, well, you you say all of these dead things, but we've only killed two Chirag that we brought with us, and then obviously the Draskar, but if we oh, burn sorry, the Draskar. Is three not a bunch of dead things? <laughs> My apologies. In the woods, in a, like, in like a wasteland society? I didn't think it would be. In a small campsite that is... No, sure, no, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Sir, never, never mind. mind. <laughs> I think it's going to be, at least from Rylu's point of view, a no, because Hillian also doesn't want it, mm-hmm. and Rylu's like, yeah, the score is great, but sometimes a good merchant knows when the risk is too big. Yep. Okay. Sounds great. Let's so, light her up. <laughs> how are we going to control this fire? A Draskar is 10. So, Why do you keep destroying my intrusions? No, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, how are we going to... I don't know how to burn a 10-foot-tall body of organic matter safely in a forest. It's a swamp forest, so there's that. We can, what if we put put the body in the water? I what was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose okay. we can do that. How are we going to move it? Thank you. Next question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. Well, I'm trying to help. <laughs> I don't know how many uh, ID uh, shows have you seen. <laughs> <laughs> Chop the sucker up and yep. drag oh. it in separate pieces. Gross. <laughs> cool. Can, that will take can, you all day. <laughs> can we try really the would. anines? Like tie ropes and get the anines to pull its body? Yeah. We'll probably try that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. You're going to have them drag it into the water, which means they have to go in the water. And as we're like discussing this idea of putting the Draskar into the water, Charlie again will be like, not this body of water. <laughs> Keep this one clear. <laughs> But this body of water, this body of water would be okay. Uh, One second. He doesn't want us to 
poison the watering hole, basically. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Would we be able to use the anine to get it up next close to it and then have us try and push it in after that? Would that be possible? Uh, You can try. Okay. Well, that would be Charlie's first uh, suggestion. What about any of our uh, our Numenera devices, our ciphers? Oh, that's a good call. I don't have any that'll help, but... I don't think so, but y'all do what you're going to do. Let's let's figure it out. We're trying here. It's a puzzle. You gave us an unintentional puzzle. <laughs> so true. All right, so do you, any ideas on how to move this? Uh, Hillian, do you know how to get this? If we burn it, I'm worried about controlling the fire. Do you, if, if you can do that, that's fine. But if not, is there a way to get it in, like, into the water? Or how do we do this? Uh, at this point, Hillian's kind of up by one of the limbs, starting to hack into the the, oh. the limb area to like start de- like deconstructing this Jurassic. Oh, we all just bathed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the blood dirt? <laughs> For those of you listening into the podcast, Kelrick currently just has his face in his hand wondering why he ever decided to start this podcast. <laughs> cool. Wouldn't all the blood have been pulled out of this thing already? Like, because it's been laying there overnight. <laughs> sure. Yes. TTR podcasts are gross. Yeah. Your Kelrick planned this whole adventure for us today, and if we get out of this campground at this point... I mean, I'm going to follow Charlie's and uh, Alien's suit, but I'm also going to try to make some good steaks out of it then. Oh, my sure. God. I mean, if we're going to be hacking up a body, we might as well get food out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Apex Predator meat is delicious. I feel like a T-Rex would taste good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't even care. You, you fine. You make steaks. Woo. Good. Um... <laughs> It's gonna come back and bite you in the ass, I promise. <laughs> yeah. So y'all figure out what you're gonna do. All right, so you're tell us how long water? it will take to deconstruct this Jurascar and we we can speed time. About two days. What? Oh it's my goodness. Ten feet long. Are you kidding? <laughs> yes. Two days I think is being generous of all three of you working constantly well okay so now in fairness if you do this for two days and charlie and rilu hide there will be a lot less of this jurascar left to deal with at the end of each night I feel um, like at this point rilu's like let's just leave the stupid thing yeah because charlie's getting antsy um, I think she would maybe want to try and attempt the thing with the anines and dragging it closer to the water and seeing if there's a way that we could at least dispose of some of it or make it look like it's been there longer or something or even drag it into the woods further so just so it's not in the campsite like it doesn't have to go, go in the water but like drag it into the woods so mm-hmm. it's not within immediate range of this campsite like just out of like view from the tower maybe and piecing out after that Cool. She just doesn't you want it in the campsite where anybody yeah. strolling by is like, oh, look, a giant Jurascar. You what? rolled a 19 on your end check. You know exactly how to do this. Okay. Your effect is that you're successful. You can rig it up, you get it done. <laughs> Hurrah. Right. <laughs> Kelrick's like, let's move on. If we bother Kelrick enough, he just gives us stuff. Maybe that's the <laughs> secret. Is that how you play all tabletop games? You just make the DM regret their... <laughs> What they Narrative mentioned. decisions. <laughs> it's like you get what you want with minimal effort. <laughs> I think we broke them. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh. Um. Yeah. So you all, y'all do the things. The Jurassicar is gone. You have your moldy cinnamon th- chirogs. Are you going to move them off as well? Just make a big pile for some other predator to find. I think we're still dragging them for killing the... Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's been a day already. I mean, I mean they're these are some, nice some... and ripe. You did nothing to deal with them. <laughs> but cool. Yeah. I mean, does Hillian need... Or Howlian need... Fresh meat? Fresh meat? <laughs> well, I think... You know, 
even even where beasts have standards. <laughs> yes, you are correct. Those Chirogs are no longer medium creatures. It's, they have decomposed that much. Okay, right. we'll throw them on the pile then, I guess. Cool. How much um, of that steak did you get? Because that could, <laughs> if we have enough of those. <laughs> I am so over this. I got. I, I have in my inventory Jurassic steaks, so. Perfect. You do not uh, have enough for a medium creature. Okay. Unless you, you know what? Roll percentile. 50, that was 50. so if you dumb. Roll low, you have enough for a Hillian snack. Howlian snack. That's low. <laughs> 11. Congrats. You have a medium's creature worth. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jurassic meat <laughs> divided up among your mean packs. Perfect. Yeah. All the while, Hillian's like, I don't know why we need all this meat. <laughs> you see, if we now we can, didn't take the head, but Draskar meat sells has to sell for a lot as well. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you bathe again because now you're mm-hmm. disgusting. And you know what? That 19 was such a great time roll. You convince How- Hillian to bathe too. Oh my goodness! Maybe that was possible. Wow. Cool. Yeah bunch of respectable adventurers get on the road. <laughs> I was like, leave this dang campsite, please. I have written more story than what's here. All right. Well, like I mentioned earlier, Charlie is actually very anxious to leave. So as soon as we come up with the idea, she <laughs> is like, okay, let's get these in. Eden. Let's drag this out here. Dump these decomposing bodies. And let's go. Like, we need to go. All right. So you get on the road maybe an hour before dusk. (laughs) Great. (laughs) You have about six hours to find another campsite before Howlin comes out. Awesome. And that's where we will end for today. But let's start with Kenny and say who you are and your goodbyes and what have you. Sure. Uh, yep. My name is Kenny. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Punder Drone. Uh, when I am not playing a were rabbit who is hungry for their pets, um, I am uh, GMing the Starfinder game uh, on the Experience Points Network uh, channel. Not network. That's not where we are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on the Experience Points channel uh, every other Saturday um, and uh, we're playing uh, the Dawn of Flame Adventure Path we're on book two, Soldiers of Brass uh, written by Crystal Fraser. It is amazing, a lot of fun and uh, yeah, that that's about it Awesome Cage Yeah, so I'm Cage um, I've been Charlie for you today uh, you can find all of my socials, my streams and stuff at ragecagerugger.com. That's R-A-G-E-K-A-G-E-R-U-G-G-E-R.com. And this Saturday, I'll also be participating in a Women in Tabletop stream. I'll be playing some D&D uh, from 10 to 1 Central Time. For those of you that are hanging out here in chat, um, and I'll, we'll be at the TPK Roleplay uh, channel. Nice. Aaron. And uh, I am Aaron, and I've been playing Riley for you, the ever uh, troublemaker. And um, you can find me on Twitter at Space Persona. You can find me on Twitch when I get a second monitor again at Catalyst, K-A-T-O-L-Y-S. Um, that's suspended for now, but it will start up again once I have a second monitor. And um, I also have a new project in the works that I can't quite announce yet because we'll see when it actually happens. But uh, stay tuned for that. Awesome. And I'm Kelrick. You can find me on Twitter at Cormalon. That's C-O-R-M-A-L-L-O-N. Or I also monitor, monitor the at EQ Points Twitter account. I'm, I play Thrawny Ecos in the Starfinder campaign that Kenny runs. And I think right now that's about all I'm doing that's public facing. I'm doing a lot of other games that are not with some really cool people. 
and um, thank you. This has been super fun. Human Era is now officially part of the Be Gay Roll Dice network, which is super exciting. A bunch of really great podcasts that you can uh, check out by going to at Be Gay Roll Dice on Twitter. And that's it for today. Thank you all. You have been so much fun. So have a great rest of your day. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Cumanera, an Excorians Points podcast. The original Excorians Points podcast is a Starfinder game that releases every Wednesday. Thank you so much for listening.